Hi guys, I want to talk to you about mirrors. Um, we are used to mirrors and we uh, are coming with, with, with uh, how you call it, its properties that it reflects pictures. Um, when photons come in, they hit the surface and then go out the same angle. And this is what makes a mirror a mirror. mirror. It gives it a mirror shine finish. Um, although we are used to it, it's not very logical. It doesn't make any sense, since mirrors are made out of atoms, like this one over on the floor, and that bunch hanging out on the couch. Atoms. And they are very rough. They have a rough surface. Uh, they're joined together, and although you, you made it smooth surface, you made it shiny, it still are rough atoms. So if a photon moves in, it reflects in all kinds of directions. So, a piece of paper here, you got your atoms, this is a mirror, and we expect, we should expect, photons coming in from one direction, shooting out in all kinds of directions, but hey, a mirror is a mirror, this is what happens, and it doesn't make sense at all, it doesn't ma matter where a photon hits, where it strikes, it goes out that direction, which is, well, impossible. So what's going on? What's going on is ground effect. Again, here you have your atoms, and you see this distance is about three to four times the diameter of that atom. And already we can see a very smooth surface appearing. So this ground effect, uh, it's not only three or four times the atom, it's about a hundred times that atom. The ground effect in this layer isn't about um, one hundredth of a millimeter to one thousandth of a millimeter. So it's uh, it's uh, rather big. It's about a thousand times as big as this atom. A hundred times, a thousand times as big. So, and uh, where does this come from, this thing? Well, we have gravitons, and they come in and they shoot out. That's, you know, gravitons, they, um, they bounce off matter. And photons, they get repelled by gravitons. Gravitons propel photons through space. So photons get repelled by gravitons. Over here, I have a little scheme. From here, going to quarks and going to photons. Photons are more entangled. When you have a quark, um, and this goes back to the very early stages of star drive, uh, the creation of the black hole. When you have a quark and the graviton comes in, it shoots right through, it bounces through as with the cradle of Newton, so it moves the quark towards the masses. Now, when those two are entangled, bouncing through is not an option. They are one piece, they're one whole. So the only thing a graviton can do is repel it, and while doing so, it creates its spin. Um, a photon being large, being big, gets hit by a graviton going about the speed of light, making it turn really slow, but when it gets hit here, speed of light, it goes faster, of course, it has a smaller circumference, so it has to roll faster in order to maintain the same speed. So this is why a, a, a ultraviolet, hello, ultraviolet photon um, has a higher frequency. And of course, when they get entangled to one hole, and this is the same array here, when they get entangled to one piece, it's not possible anymore to strike one or the other. You can strike one or the other, one or the other, but the moment they become one, it's very hard to strike the one or the other. You often strike them both, so rotating them, spinning them, becomes impossible. And that's your, um, how you call this thing, uh, ultraviolet catastrophe. There's no frequency anymore, it's gone. So the frequency rises rapidly and then suddenly stops. And that's why. So again, this little array, and of course, again, quarks get pulled in, but photons get pushed out, and because they get pushed, they tend to rotate. Now back to this layer, this ground effect, if you will. Um, the photons um, get pulled in. No, no, they, no, no. <laughs> the photons. 
uh, get reflected. They get pushed out. No, pushed out, not pulled in, pushed out. So when photons come in and they get hit by this layer, by all these gravitons coming from all those sides, say 100 gravitons hits them, in average, it will veer them off back into space at the same angle. So this is what you see in the mirror, and this is what happens. Um, the photons never touch the surface of the atoms. Um, maybe uh, some will. I mean, the, those things are like uh, meteors. This UV, they, they are big, they are sturdy, they are strong. They are like meteors, and maybe they can bounce through all the way, but not very often. It's, it's, it's almost impossible. So, photons being repelled by the gravitons coming from the mass makes them veer out in the same direction. You see this very smooth line appearing in the same direction as they came in. So that's how a mirror works. Now this leaves us with a few vital clues. It says, over here in this layer, there's a lot of things going on. It also makes us understand why some photons can penetrate and some don't. Um, if I shoot a photon and make it hit with any of those um, atoms, it should create a disturbance and then affect uh, free electrons. So people call it freeing electrons, but in fact it's nothing more than the photon being disintegrated into uh, electrons. So, but um, it doesn't matter the color, it doesn't matter, whenever you hit it, you will free electrons. But that's not the case in reality, because some cannot penetrate and some can. So, again, this mirror uh, leaves us with a vital clue. Photons normally do not touch the atoms. They get repelled by this atmosphere. That's it. Thank you. And the next time I will discuss what's going on in this layer. Thank you. Bye.